Shri Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Yashodanandana Bhritatanarandana Yashodanandana Bhritatanarandana Yamuna Tira Vanachati Yamuna Tira Vanachati Kaya Dada Madhapa Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Dharadhari Pichana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Yashoda Nandana Bhraja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bhraja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya
ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय सो लॉर्ड बालाराम इज मेन्शंड इन द दास अवतर स्तोत्र द दास अवतर स्तोत्र इज इन वैष्णव सॉन्ग बुक इट्स अ फेमस सॉन्ग रिटन बाय जयदेव गोस्वामी Jai Deva Goswami wrote the 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 Gita Govinda. Yeah, Gita Go Jai Deva Goswami wrote a very famous book called Gita Govinda, which is song, beautiful poetry about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And the very beginning of the Gita Govinda is this song, the Das Avatar Stotra, which is in our Vaishnava song book, and the eighth verse. is about lord balaram we sing the fourth verse every day keshava drita nara hari rupa tava kara kamala varena kamaduta shringa right we sing that every day that's the fourth verse lord nishinga dev is the fourth of the das avatars and the eighth avatar is lord balaram And so it's described about Lord Balaram, Kesha Badrita Haladara Rupa. Lord Balaram's name is Haladara. We mentioned yesterday, right? I think all of you were there yesterday. Well, of course, some of you came last night, so you couldn't be there. But most of you were there yesterday. All right. So I'll read the translation to the eighth verse. says o keshava o lord of the universe o lord <clears throat> o lord hari who, who have assumed the form of balarama the wielder of the plow all glories to you in your in your brilliant white body you wear garments the color of a of a of a fresh blue rain cloud these garments are all, are colored like the these garments are colored like the beautiful uh beautiful fluid that of the river yamuna and feel great fear that in the wielding of the plow these garments are colored like the beautiful fresh what is fresh hue of the river yamuna who who flows who feels great fear that in the serving in the in the searing of your plow so that this referring to the past time where lord balaram was intoxicated We've been drinking the Varuni beverage, right? Today we have to make Varuni beverage, means honey, mixed with some other things. But Varuni, Balaram's favorite drink was this Varuni, and he would drink so much of it, he would become intoxicated. You know, if you take too many sweet things, too much sugar in the blood. you become intoxicated sometimes people new devotees they will eat too many sweets too many gulab jamuns or too many simply wonderfuls and they will have so much blood in their sugar that they become almost intoxicated so lord balaram had been taking varuni and he had become very intoxicated 
And at that time he ordered the Yamuna River to come. He told the Yamuna River, you come here, I want to bathe in your waters. And the Yamuna didn't pay any attention. So then Lord Balaram got angry and he picked up his plough and he began to break the Yamuna River into little streams. And so at that time then the deity of the Yamuna River appeared, the goddess who is the presiding deity of the Yamuna. Each holy river, each of the rivers there is a personality just like Ganges, the deity of the river Ganges she rides on the crocodile and if you go to Mayapur you will see that deity is worshipped there in the temple at the side of the Ganges. So the same way the Yamuna, there's a goddess who is the presiding deity of the Yamuna river and then she appeared and she fell at the feet of Lord Balaram and she begged Lord Balaram to forgive her for her being for her not paying uh, proper respect to Lord Balaram. So that pastime is being referred to here by Jayadeva Goswami. He is also describing the feature of Lord Balaram that he wears blue garments and his, of course he's very fair, very white coloured like the moon. So. Lord Balaram is the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu here in this Das Avatar Stotra. Some people think Krishna is the eighth avatar, but actually it's Balarama who is the eighth avatar. Krishna is not avatar, he is the, he is the source of all the avatars. So we say Keshava Drita Narahari Rupa. How Keshava Drita Haladara Rupa, like that. Who is that Keshava? Well, that is Lord Krishna. He is the avatari, he is the source of all of the avatars. So Lord Balaram comes as the eighth avatar and his mood is to render service to Lord Krishna. But sometimes there will be problems because they are a family. In family affairs you know there is often disagreements. You all know we all come from families and we know what in the family of life there will be quarrels and disagreements. So it happened while Krishna was living in Dwarka because Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they're brothers and they have a sister. They don't have, they have many sisters, but there was one sister in particular, Subhadra. And it happened that Lord Balaram, he wanted to arrange the marriage of Subhadra. And he was thinking to arrange Subhadra's marriage to Duryodhana. Duryodhan had been the student of Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama had taught Duryodhan to fight with the club. So uh, Lord Balaram was thinking he would arrange the marriage of Subhadra with Duryodhan. But what happened was Lord Krishna uh, has a friendship with Arjuna. And Arjuna had come to Dwarka and he had saw Subhadra and he was attracted by her beauty. So Arjuna thought how he could get Subhadra for his wife. So he disguised himself as a, as a sannyasi, as a, a monk and he grew a beard you know, like some of the devotees, they grow beards nowadays, a lot of people have beards, chaturmasya, you know, they're not really doing chaturmasya, but part of, sometimes in chaturmasya, the devotee will not shave for four weeks, four months, because that 
minimizes the attention on the body. So Lord Balarama, uh, rather Arjuna, he came to Dwarka disguised, dressed in saffron clothes and he was saying, I'm doing Chaturmasya and he had grown his hair, of course he's Kshatriya, so he had long hair and he'd grown a beard. So he was living there and at a certain point and when the Chaturmasya finished, then uh, the, the people in Dwarka, they, they invited Arjuna to come and take food. So they brought Arjuna into the palace at Dwarka and Arjuna came into the palace at Dwarka and at that time, you know, they honored him and they thought he's a sadhu, he's a holy person and they fed him nicely. They did not know he was Arjuna. But then when Arjuna saw Subhadra, then he took her. He just simply picked her up and went off with her. <laughs> and so the people in Dwarka were shocked and Balarama was very upset because Lord Balarama was, a, he was planning to, in, to get Subhadra married to Duryodhana. But Lord Krishna, of course, he knew everything. Balarama also should know everything, but somehow by Yoga Maya, Balarama didn't realize that this uh, man dressed as a sannyasi was actually Arjuna. Somehow by the influence of Yoga Maya, Krishna arranged that Lord Balaram was covered over and he didn't know that this was Arjuna. And so when Arjuna took, went, he took Subhadra and went off with her, Lord Balaram was very upset that, oh, that he's taking our sister away like this. What kind of man is this? And it was only Lord Krishna who had to pacify Lord Balarama and tell him that, no, it's all right. Actually, Subhadra likes this man. She liked this man who was Arjuna. Lord Krishna, was, he was the only one he was able to convince Lord Balarama that it's all right, don't worry about it. That she didn't want to marry Duryodhana. You were planning to get her married to Duryodhana, but she didn't like him anyway. She liked Arjuna. So Arjuna's taken her now for his wife. So Arjuna had four wives actually. Draupadi was one first wife and then Subhadra and then Chitrangada and then Ujwali, Ujwala. There were four wives of Arjuna. When Arjuna and the Pandavas retired to the Himalayas at that time, their wives also went with them. Draupadi, at least Draupadi and Subhadra, they also followed the Pandavas into the Himalayas. After Lord Krishna had disappeared from the world, they all followed their husbands. They went to the Himalayas. That was the order of Narada Muni. He told them that after Krishna leaves the world, you should also retire. And so the Pandavas all went to the Himalayas and Subhadra and Draupadi also went with their husbands. So Lord Balaram's pastimes with Lord Krishna, usually Lord Balaram is with Lord Krishna in the different pastimes. But it happened that while they were cowherd boys, uh, one day it was Lord Balaram's birthday, today, like today is Lord Balaram's birthday. So this pastime took place today, 5,000 years ago, in the forest of Rindav. Lord Balaram's birthday, his mother, Rohini, although he was in the womb of Devaki for the first seven months, he took birth from the womb of Rohini. 
So Rohini is considered the mother because she gave birth to him. So Rohini kept Balarama back that day. All the cowherd boys with Lord Krishna and the calves, they'd all gone to the forest. But it was Lord Balarama's birthday. So Mother Rohini thought, Lord ba let Balarama stay back today and I will bathe him and decorate him for his birthday. This is his birthday, we want to decorate him nicely, so I'll keep him back, I won't let him go into the forest, let him stay back and I'll bathe him and decorate him and he can uh, celebrate his birthday in this way. So Lord Balaram didn't go to the forest and that was the day that Lord Brahma somehow chose to steal away all the cows and the cowherd boys from Lord Krishna. They were all there in the forest and at one point the, ca the calves had all gone away. They'd all gone off, you know, looking for grass, the cows, they wander here and there. So the cows had gone off wandering and the cowherd boys, they were taking their lunch. So while they were taking their lunch, Lord Krishna said, I will go and bring the cows myself. You continue taking your lunch. So all the cowherd boys continued taking their lunch and Lord Krishna went off to find the cows. But when Lord Krishna went off to find the cows, at that time Lord Brahma came and he stole away all the cows and then he came and took all the cowherd boys as well. And he left Lord Krishna all on his own. So Lord Krishna realized that this is the trick of Brahma. Lord Krishna he knows everything. He is omniscient. So he knew what was happening and he knew this is the trick of Lord Brahma. But there were no cowherd boys and there were no calves. Lord Brahma had stolen them all away. And Lord Krishna thought, what to do? No all my, all my friends have all been taken away from me. All are cows. And if I go back alone, I will go back alone to go co to our home. What will I tell to the people? What will I tell to my mother and father you know, that all the cows have gone, I've lost them all, and all the coward boys have also gone? So Lord Krishna thought what to do, it would be very distressing. So Lord Krishna, by his mystic potency, he expanded himself to take the place of all the cowherd boys and all the calves as well. And he didn't tell anyone. And Lord Balaram, he was not there, so he did not get taken away by anybody. So, this Lord Krishna then, in the form of all the cowherd boys and all the calves, he went home. And he went home and nobody knew what was happening. Nobody knew that all these cowherd boys are actually Krishna. That Krishna was taking the place of all the different cowherd boys. And when they went home, the mothers of all the different boys, they felt more love for their son because now their son was not just simply any ordinary son, but he was Krishna himself. So when they came there to the home of the different cowherd people, the mothers, they all felt so much maternal affection for their child. They felt more affection than they usually felt. And they felt so much affection that the milk was flowing from their breasts. You know, when the child grows up a bit, 
then the mother no longer feeds the breast milk to the child. But these ladies, because their children was now Krishna, they were feeling so much love that the milk was flowing from their breasts and they were feeding their child milk. Actually, each of these ladies, they had the desire to have Krishna as their son. They were all gopis and they had children of their own, but they all were attracted to Lord Krishna. And they desired, oh, I would love to have a child like Krishna. Oh, I would love to have Krishna as my child. And so Krishna fulfilled their desire. But Lord Krishna not only came in the form of the cowherd boys, he also came in the form of the calves. And when the calves came home, then the mother cows, they also felt more affection for their calves. Usually as the calf grows, the mother will not feed their milk anymore to the calf because the calf is growing up. It can eat grass. It doesn't need to drink the mother's milk. But these, because these calves are now Krishna, the, the cows feel so much affection for their calves and their milk is flowing and the calves are going and drinking the milk of their mother cow. So this past, this shows, this pastime shows that the person who we love more than anyone is Krishna. Although we may have some feeling for other people, we think, my child, my son, we're thinking like that, oh, you know, we feel affection. But the person who we really love is actually Krishna. And this pastime shows. Of course, nobody knew that it was actually Krishna. However, it happened that in the, because Lord Brahma had taken away the cowherd boys and the cows and the boys, he'd hid them. He'd hid them away. And the time of Lord Brahma, like one moment of Lord Brahma's time is like one year on this planet. So Lord Brahma took them away for a moment of his time and he came back after one year on this planet. So in the course of that one year, it happened that one day Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were herding the calves and the calves were down at the side of the Govardhan hill. And on the Govardhan hill, there were the men from Govardhan and they had the cows. You, you see, they separate the calves and the cows. So the cows were up on the Govardhan hill and the calves were down at the bottom of the Govardhan hill. And the, it happened that when the, when the cows saw the calves down at the bottom of the Govardhan hill, then the cows all became attracted to the calves. And the cows all began to run down the hill. They began to run because they were so eager to come to their calves. Now usually it would not happen like that. But because these calves are Krishna, and because it's Krishna who is the dearmost soul of everyone, even of the cows, the cows came running down the hill to feed their milk to the calves. And the older men who were taking care of the cows, at first they were angry and they thought, Oh no, look at this, the cows are running down the hill. Oh no, they're going there and the calves are drinking all their milk. There'll be no milk left. 
will take the cows home at night, they won't have any milk left in their udder to offer. So the men were feeling disturbed that the cows had run down the hill. But the men, the older men, they came down the hill themselves. And when they came down and they saw all the cowherd boys, of course they were like the father of, many of the men were the father of these boys. So when they saw the boys there, they became very affectionate to them. And they began to pat their heads and stroke their faces and show so much affection for the cowherd boys. And it was unusual. Lord Balaram was watching and he could understand. This is something very unusual. Why should, the, first of all, why should the cows have so much affection for the calves? And now the cowherd men have so much affection for the cowherd boys. So then Balaram thought more closely about it and he understood that these calves, cowherd boys, they must all be Krishna because it's only Krishna who could cause so much loving feeling from other people. The person who we all love the most is Krishna. But we're in the bodily illusion. We become overwhelmed by the body. We're thinking, my son. But of course, the, the, it's just the body. The person who we really love is Krishna. And when the soul leaves the body, then nobody loves a dead body anymore. Even if it may be your child, but the body dies, the, ch the soul leaves the body and Krishna also leaves. Then. So the person who we really love is Lord Krishna. And this pastime of the illusion of Lord Brahma, it's called the Brahma Vimohan Lila. This pastime is very instructive in this matter. So Lord Balaram could understand everything, what was happening. And, and of course, after some time Lord Brahma came back and he wanted, he brought back, well first he came back to see what was taking place. And he was shocked to see that all the cows and all the cowherd boys were there. And Brahma was thinking, how could they all be there? I've stolen them away and I've put them in a cave and I've kept them prisoner in there. They should still be there. How could they all be there with Krishna? And then he came, he came closer and he saw, and everything, he saw everywhere the super soul. He saw Lord Krishna in the form of the super soul, in the hearts of all living entities and in the atom. He saw everywhere the all-pervading super-soul and he saw that Lord Shiva was also there in many different forms and they were bowing down and worshipping the super-soul. And Lord Brahma's mind became just totally bewildered. He could not begin to understand the opulent position of Lord Krishna. So this was Lord Krishna's Yoga Maya, he was bewildering even the mind of Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma wanted to see the greatness of Lord Krishna, but Lord Brahma could not begin to understand how great Lord Krishna was. So Lord Krishna revealed that to him, that there is no limit to the greatness of Lord Krishna. So the, the pastime uh, is instructed for it, in, involving Lord Balarama. Uh, 
I'm trying to remember what pastimes I didn't tell because yesterday we also spoke about Lord Balaram. So I'm trying to give you some different pastimes. Some other things Lord Balaram did was he killed this one Divida Gorilla. Divida Gorilla. He had actually been around a long time and he had fought along with the army of Lord Ramachandra and they had, he had helped in the battle of Lanka to fight against Ravan. Lord Rama didn't have any army with him. He had only, his only army were monkeys and bears and gorillas. They were his army and he was fighting against the, the powerful army of Ravan. So this Dwevida gorilla, he had actually helped in the battle against Ravan. But in course of time, this Dwevida gorilla had become degraded. He had gone back to his uh, animalistic habits and he'd become very sinful, did a lot of different sins. So it happened at one point Lord Balaram was having pastimes with his gopis. I told you yesterday how Lord Balaram, he has his own gopis who are different from Krishna's gopis. So Lord Balaram was enjoying his pastimes with the gopis and Dravida Gorilla had come there and he tried to take some of the gopis with him. Not only did he do that, but he started to show his, his private parts to the gopis. He became very disgusting, the revealing his private parts to the young girls, the gopis. So Lord Balaram decided he had to do something about this Dravida gorilla and he had a great battle. And Dravida gorilla came, first of all he brought trees and tried to hit Lord Balaram with many trunks of trees. Lord Balaram smashed all the trees. Then Dravida gorilla came with rocks and mountains and tried to smash Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram smashed all the rocks and mountains into dust. And then Dravida Gorilla came and he began to use his fists to try to pound Lord Balarama. But Lord Balarama simply struck Dravida Gorilla and knocked him down dead. So Lord Balarama is very, very powerful. He is also the personality of Godhead and he performs these wonderful pastimes. Another important service Lord Balaram did was, you know, Krishna, Lord Krishna had left the people of Vrindavan. At that time Lord Balaram had also gone with him. They had gone to Mathura. Kamsa had sent Akrura to Vrindavan to bring Krishna and Balaram and Kamsa had arranged the wrestling match. So Balarama and Krishna agreed they would go and they got on the chariot and they went to the Krura. But of course the gopis were broken hearted. They didn't want Krishna to go. And they tried to do everything to stop Krishna from going. They lay on the path and they held the horses of the chariot. They said, no, please don't go. Anyway, Lord Krishna finally convinced them that he had to go. But he promised them, I'm definitely coming back. Don't worry, I'm definitely coming back. And so Lord Krishna left Vrindavan with Lord Balaram and all the cowherd men and cowherd boys, they also went, they also were invited to the wrestling match to see the great contest which Kamsa had arranged. 
So, uh, Lord Balarama, he helped Lord Krishna at the wrestling match. They defeated the wrestlers. First of all, Kamsa had arranged Kuvala Yapida, a very nasty elephant to block the path. But Lord Krishna had killed that elephant and the keeper of the elephant. They were both demons. And then they went into the arena and they had the wrestling match and they were powerful big wrestlers. And Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were only young boys, teenage boys, 11 years old. Krishna was 11 when he came to Mathura. And their bodies were very soft and they were fighting wrestlers whose bodies were like rocks. If you see the illustrations in the Krishna book, you can see that Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram do not look like a fair match for, for the wrestlers. But anyway, they said, no, it's fair. They said, we know Krishna and Balaram, they are wrestling every day. When they go to the forest, they're wrestling with all the co other cowherd boys. We know they're very skilled in wrestling. So it's all right, it's a fair con. Anyway, they fought together and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they killed these wrestlers. And when they killed all the wrestlers, then Kamsa became very angry and he jumped into the arena and tried to kill Krishna. But Lord Krishna defeated him, knocked him down dead and then dragged him across the ground to show all the people that he was actually dead because all the people were afraid of him. So in this way Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they removed Kamsa and they could free Vasudeva and Devaki from their prison house. And then Vasudeva and Devaki, they requested, when they were freed, they requested Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. They said, you know, we are your parents, but we have not given you any education. We want you to get a nice education. Just like people today, you know, they like their children to get education. So, Vasudeva and Devaki requested Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram that you should go and get education, be then you can be initiated. So they went to Sandipani Muni's ashram. Sandipani Muni's ashram is in a place called Avantipur. Today it's called Ujjain, but in the past the name was Avantipur. And if you go there today, we have our Iskon temple at Ujjain. You can go there and see our Iskon temple and not far away. Ujjain, it's not a very big place. Not far away is the ashram of Sandipani Muni. And Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram both went there and they were nice devotees. They shaved their heads and they had nice shikas. They were young boys, they had a nice shika. And they, were, they stayed in the ashram of Sandipani Muni 64 days. 64, in 64 days they learned all of the 64 arts. There are 64 different arts in the Vedic culture. So every day Sandipani Muni instructed them in the different arts. And each day they mastered each and every one of the different arts. And of course after that Sandipani Muni then he wanted Guru Dakshin. And he understood that these two boys are not ordinary boys. And so he asked them, he said, some time ago my son 
drowned when he'd gone to the sea. He drowned in the sea. He said, please go and bring him back. So Sandipani Muni requested them to bring back his dead son. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram first of all went to the sea where he had drowned. There was one demon there named Panchajanya. Panchajanya was there and they killed that Panchajana and they took the conch shell from his head. That conch shell is Lord Krishna's conch, the Panchajana, Panchajanya. It was from, taken from this demon Panchajanya. So Lord Krishna could not find the boy who was the son of the guru there. So then he went to Yamalok to see Lord Yamaraj. And when they went there, Lord Yamaraj came and he offered his, he offered his obeisances to Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram and request, asked them, how can I serve you? So they told him that our teacher has lost his son in the sea and do you have him here? So Yamaraj went and he brought the boy, gave the boy to Krishna and Balaram and they brought the boy back to Lord Krishna. Uh, and brought the boy to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna brought him back to, to, uh, to Mathura. Vasudeva and Devaki, they were in Mathura. Oh, well, he brought the boy back to Ujjain because it was, this, it was Sandipani Muni's son. And so in this way they paid their debt to their guru and their guru was very grateful to them and he blessed them. He blessed them that they would always remember all the mantras they have learned, that they will never forget any of the different mantras and things which he had taught them. But it's a nice blessing to have. We see many devotees, they study courses, they take the Bhakti Shastri course, and if you ask them, what is that mantra? Oh, awa, awa. <laughs> they forget very quickly, very easily. They study and they study for the exam and after the exam it's all forgotten. But Sandipani Muni blessed Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram that they will always remember everything he had taught them. So, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram then came back to Mathura and they were living in Mathura but then they, they had to transfer to Dwarka because Mathura was being attacked, particularly Jarasandha was attacking Mathura. Jarasandha was the great enemy of Lord Krishna. One reason why he was the enemy was Lord Krishna had killed Kamsa and Kamsa's wives were all the daughters of Jarasandha. So when Krishna killed Kamsa, all of his daughters had become widows. So they went back to their father and they told their father Jarasandha that Lord Krishna has killed our husband. And Jarasandha said, I will kill Krishna. Jarasandha is a big demon, you see. Anyway, Jarasandha, he was a powerful king. He had great army and he came and he fought Mathura and he attacked Krishna 17 times. And 17 times Krishna had defeated him. And then on the 18th time it happened that there was another king also coming, some demon king named Kalayavana. And so Mathura was being surrounded by these two different armies. So Lord Krishna thought how to save the people of Dwarka. So he thought, I will move, how, how to save the people of Mathura? Because they were attacking Mathura. So Krishna thought, I'll move everyone to Dwarka. So in the night, Lord Krishna transferred all the inhabitants of Mathura and moved them all to Dwarka. Now Dwarka is very far away from Mathura. 
Dwarka. Mathura is in the center of India and Dwarka is way over on the west coast. Way over on the west coast. It's a long way. Lord Krishna moved everyone to an island there. He made an island, a special island, Dwarka, and he moved everyone there for their safety. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balarama went there and their parents, Vasudeva and Devaki, also went there. But Lord Krishna was thinking, what about the people of Vrindavan? He, because he knew the people of Vrindavan were very anxious to have his associate to be with Krishna again. They love Krishna so much. So Lord Krishna asked Lord Balarama to go back to Vrindavan. And Lord Balarama, he went back to visit the people in Vrindavan and to bring them news about Lord Krishna to tell them how Lord Krishna is remembering them. He has not forgotten them and he was remembering them. So Lord Balarama brought the message of Lord Krishna to the people in Vrindavan and he stayed there with them, uh, was it 14 days? He stayed there and associated with them told all, the, reminded them everything about the pastimes of Lord Krishna and encouraged them in their devotion to Lord Krishna. Because Lord Balarama is the Adi Guru. He, he is teaching all of us how to serve Lord Krishna. And of course, Lord Balaram does service for Krishna in so many ways. There are ten different items which are all manifestations of Lord Balarama for the service of Lord Krishna. His bed, his seat, his cushion, his umbrella, his shoes, his ornaments, uh, this Brahmana thread, they're all different manifestations of Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama takes these forms for the service of Lord Krishna. And Lord Balarama also expands himself as Sankarshan and from Sankarshan comes the different Purusha avatars, Mahavishnu, Garbhodakshai Vishnu, Shirodakshai Vishnu. Shirodakshai Vishnu is the Lord in the heart, the Super Soul. So that Super Soul is also an expansion of Lord Balarama for the service of Lord Krishna. And Lord Balarama also comes as Ananta Shesha. And as Ananta Shesha, He's holding up the different planets on his hoods. And with each of his mouths, he's chanting the glories of the Supreme Lord. Another interesting pastime in concerning Lord Balaram uh, is when he comes as Lord Nityananda. So it happened that there was one devotee named uh, Raghu. Nath, Raghunath. Raghunath wanted to leave his family and to become with, and he wanted to live with Lord Chaitanya, he wanted to renounce everything material. Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas and gone to Jagannath Puri and Raghunath was attracted. He also wanted to go and to renounce his material life. And Raghunath was from a very wealthy family. They were, they were maintaining all the brahmanas of Bengal. And Raghunath had the most beautiful wife. And she was a very soft-spoken wife. She was not harsh in speaking. 
You know, some people can speak very harsh, but the Raghunath had this very gentle, kind, loving wife, but he was not attached. He didn't, it didn't attract him. He wanted to devote himself fully to go to be with Lord Chaitanya. So he approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly and Lord Chaitanya told him, don't act like a foolish person. Go home and behave like a normal person and keep Krishna in your heart. So Raghunath had been instructed in this way by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he did it. He went back home and he behaved like a normal person, like a loving husband and a good son and took care, pleased his mother and father. Everyone was happy. They thought, oh, now Raghunath is normal at last. He's not going to run away from home. He's not going to go off and become a sadhu anymore. So they were relieved. However, after some time it happened that Lord Nityananda came. He came to a place called Panihati. Panihati is near to Kalkara and it's on the bank of the river Ganga. So there's a number of devotees live there in that village, Panihati. And Lord Nityananda had come there with all of his associates. Lord Nityananda was traveling around different places, going different villages, doing programs, having kirtan and having satsang and giving association. So they came to Panihati and Lord, when Raghunath heard that Lord Nityananda had come to Panihati, he begged permission from his parents that please can I also go to Panihati and have darshan of Lord Nityananda? So they said, all right, yeah, go ahead, no harm. Because they thought Raghunath is normal now, he's not going to run away from home, he's not going to leave a home anymore, he's he was a normal person, so let him go, Panihati. So he went to Panihati and it was in Panihati he put on the Shira Dahi festival. Every year we celebrate this festival, the Shira Dahi festival. And it was held in Panihati. And every year in Panihati they hold it. We also celebrate it in our temples. Shira means flat rice, flat crushed rice. And you, you soak it in water or you can soak it in milk and it, it's very nice to take, especially in the very hot weather, in the midst of the summer when it's very hot. Bengali people will eat this, this flat rice mixed with dahi. Dahi means yogurt. So Raghunath came there to Panihati and when Lord Nityananda saw him, then he said to Raghunath, he said, Today I'm going to punish you. I want you to put on a festival for all the devotees. Your punishment is to put on the festival for everyone. So in Bengal, you know, in the summer it's very hot, it's so hot, things are not growing very easily. The only thing you get is some rice and some bananas and some mangoes. And so Raghunath, he, he put on the Shira Dahi festival. He purchased a lot of flat rice and he put, purchased all the different fruits and bananas and mangoes and he purchased all of the milk, the yogurt and the condensed milk, whatever was available in the market. He was purchasing all the things and they washed the flat rice in the Ganga and they mixed in the yogurt and the bananas and the condensed milk and it made a very nice, very palatable festival and they distributed it in huge quantities. You know in India 
when you distribute prasadam, people come from everywhere. You have no idea where they come from. Because masses of people all come, crowds of… So they all heard, Raghunath is putting on a festival. So they all came and all the children came. And of course, not only the children, all the dogs came. So everybody was there and they were feeding everyone. Even the dogs were fed, nobody went hungry. So Lord Nityananda was very pleased with Raghunath and he placed his lotus feet on the head of Raghunath. And Raghunath begged Lord Nityananda, he said, please bless me that I can get freed of my entanglement in this worldly situation. So Lord Nityananda told Raghunath, yeah, very soon you're going to be freed, that very soon it will happen, you will get out from that situation. So it's very instructive to understand that if you try to go to Krishna directly, it's very difficult. But if you go through Krishna's devotee, like Lord Balaram, then it's very easy. By the mercy of Lord Balaram, you can get the mercy of Lord Krishna. Because Lord Balaram is very dear to Lord Krishna. So today we are also praying to Lord Balaram, please give us mercy, please deliver us from the illusion of material life and help us to come to Krishna consciousness. So it's a very special day. We want to get the mercy of Lord Balarama and in this way then we can be sure to get the mercy of Lord Krishna. And Raghunath did, by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, he got free from his material life and he was able to go and join Lord Chaitanya. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone? Yes, Prabhu. Humans have the knowledge and understanding to see who is Krishna. What about the animals Do they feel, do they have the same potency? What about? Animals or cows, do they have the same potency to understand Krishna? Prabhu is asking that human beings have the ability to understand Krishna. What about the animals? Do they have the ability to understand Krishna? No, not usually. Sometimes we do see some animals in Krishna consciousness though. Even Jangananda Goswami Maharaj has written one book about animals in Krishna consciousness. But it's not very common. Animals cannot hear. They don't have the ability to hear the scriptures and to understand. Of course, they can hear the holy name and it's good for them to hear the holy name. It will help them to get a human form in the next life. And we like to give animals prasadam and animals taking prasadam will also benefit them, can also help them to progress to the human form of life. But animals don't have the ability to inquire, right? Human life, in the human form of life we can inquire about what is the difference between, the mat between matter and spirit. So the, the animals, they cannot do that. They don't have that intelligence. Animals can only do, they can eat and sleep and they can mate and they can defend. So these four activities, these are what we call the animal propensities. And if one is only busy in eating and sleeping and mating and defending, then he's no better 
than an animal. We say a dvipada pashu, a two-legged animal. But the activities are the same as the animal, not much different. So human life is meant for thoughtfulness, meant for inquiry and investigation, to understand who am I, why am I here, why am I suffering, these kind of things. The animals, they cannot ask that. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Yes? Hi, Yoshima. Hi, Raghunath, yes. Did Raghunath write a book? Yes, he wrote a book. And she's asking about Raghunath Das Goswami that has passed times with, first with Lord Chaitanya and then with Lord Nityananda. So, yes, Raghunath did. He wrote some important books. Mana, what's it called? Manasa? Manasa? Yes. Manasi, Manasa Shiksha. Manasa Shiksha. It's quite a big. You can read the book that has been published by some ISKCON devotees. Manasiksha. You have to ask the people in the, the bookshop. See what they've got in the bookshop. If they don't have here, you may get it in KL. Maybe in KL they have a bigger selection. I don't know. But. It's, it's the Raghunath Das, uh, yeah. So he wrote important books and uh, he got, he, when he went to Puri, he was put under the care of Swarup Damodar. And if he had any questions, he would ask Swarup Damodar and Swarup Damodar would ask Lord Chaitanya. So first of all, he got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Anyway, the point is you have to get the mercy of the spiritual master before you get the mercy of Krishna. So he got the mercy of Lord Nityananda and then he got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And when he went to Puri and he met Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya didn't tell him to go home. He told him, you're very fortunate. He said, you got out of the very difficult situation. You were in the well. You were in a well. The materialistic life is like falling into a well. It's very hard to get out if you fall in the well. But somehow Raghunath got out by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And so he came to Lord Chaitanya. He lived in Puri, later R Lord Chaitanya left the world, then Raghunath went to Vrindavan and he lived in Vrindavan with Rupa and Sanatan and then he went to Radhakund and he stayed at Radhakund and Raghunath's place is there at Radhakund and he developed the Radhakund and Shamakund. Some rich people came. They brought a lot of money and gave it to Raghunath and Raghunath had the two Radhakund and Shamakund constructed. He didn't take any money with him, but Krishna arranged. Rich people came and gave the money and he was able to have nice place built. Radhakund, Shamakund. So Raghunath did a lot of important service for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and for the mission. And he wrote book also, wrote some books.
Okay. All right. No other questions? Yes? Well, uh, I'm not able to hear. Are you able to hear Yamunamai? Yamunamai, are you hearing what she said? Huh? She said uh, battlefield of Kurukshetra, the war lasted 18 days. Yeah. Jarasandha attacked Mathura 18 times. Uh -huh. uh, so, why is 18 very significant to this number? Oh. No, I, I don't know the significance of the 18. They said battle of Kurukshetra lasted 18 days and Lord Jarasandha attacked 17 times. It was the 18th time. So she's asking what is the significance of the 18? <laughs> We could say Bhagavad Gita is also 18 chapters, right? How many mantras in the Ishopanishad? Sri Ishopanishad, how many mantras? Huh? 18. Yes, also 18. Any significance in the 18? I don't know. Anybody know? I'm not familiar with that science. Okay, Hare Krishna. So we'll have Arti now. Thank you very much. Sri Balaram Maha Mahotsava Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Premanande.